Peloton. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. This is Good Morning KU. I hope you guys have your coffee or tea because we got a lot to talk about. We do. Yeah, I'm Jordan Nicole. And I'm Shamaria Massenberg. Yeah, so uh, the vice presidential debate was last night and boy, things got pretty heated. They definitely did. I would say with the vice president speaking over Kamala so several times, it got pretty heated. Yeah, so her line that a lot of people have been talking about is, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I don't know about you, but that really resonated with me being, one, a woman and also being a black woman. I commended her for that because she held her own in a very um, poised way. And she just was like, you know, I'm going to finish. And I just think it kind of um, tied into this narrative in a positive way, but sometimes uh, black women are portrayed in the media as being aggressive, harsh, um, and Trump went on to call her like a monster. So what are your thoughts about that? Did you feel how I felt or? Jordan, I have to agree with you. As a young black woman, it was very inspiring watching Kamala hold her own and remain calm as she was being cut off several times when she could have gotten angry and fed into the whole narrative of a angry black woman who was always speaking out but um it was great watching her and i definitely mm -hmm. felt inspired mm -hmm. so can we talk about the fly the fly that was on the fly yeah yeah um gabrielle union tweeted the fly for president it was so funny um <laughs> twitter was going crazy last night over the fly landing on the vice president's head as he was speaking and it just sat there for about two minutes or so yeah like, it didn't move. Which At all. It was kind of odd. There were, now, you know there were so many conspiracy theories on Twitter. Everyone saying it's a distraction. And even someone said it was a robot fly. A robot fly. That's yeah. a new one. I've never heard that one before. At all. <laughs> um, so there was also a lot of deflecting going on at the at the debate last night, uh, different topics came up about um, health care, climate change, uh, the topic of Breonna Taylor and racism, uh, systemic racism and how they would handle that, coronavirus, so, so many um, topics to discuss. What are your thoughts on deflecting on both sides? I think it should have been avoided and just, they should have just been straight to the point and answered the questions that were asked of them. And I know there was a point where um, the vice president, he said something along the lines of, but did Breonna Taylor get justice? And I know that didn't resonate well with a lot of people, um, especially myself, being that that's just a very sensitive topic right now. And only one of the officers were charged. Yeah. You know, I think for me, I really enjoy the debate I don't know just because if it's more stakes coming up with this election or maybe just because I get to vote and I am coming into my adulthood and really starting to enjoy things like voting um, but I noticed that it seemed like we were trying to steer back towards this traditional sense of um, debating that was more so professional and it didn't seem like the last debate in terms of it feeling like a reality match. Um, Being that uh, this is our first year voting, it is really exciting to be able to watch these debates and compare it to the first presidential debate. And um, the one last night, I think it was more of a clear winner in a sense with Kamala making her points and saying what she had to say and then remaining calm while she spoke with the vice president. So I'm very excited for this upcoming election and can't wait to vote. Yes, neither can I. Um, so the internet has spoken and the feedback shows that uh, most, mostly all the citizens that have watched say that Kamala Harris um, stole everyone's hearts at the debate last night um, in comparison to the last debate where there wasn't so, there wasn't a clear winner. Um, so now we're gonna um, kick it to my package and take a look at what the students had to say on campus about the debate.
We are 27 days away from election night. The stakes for the vice presidential debate are extremely high due to COVID-19. Donald Trump, along with First Lady Melania, revealed last Friday that they both tested positive for the coronavirus. Since the major announcements, others in the White House have tested positive as well. Here's what the vice presidential candidates have to say. We stand with President Donald Trump. Biden and Kamala Harris would set America on a path of socialism and decline, and we're not going to let it happen. The future of the debates will look much different going forward. Candidates will be taking extra precautions tonight by being separated by a plexiglass. Trump recently downplayed the coronavirus. Here's what he had to say after being released from the hospital. As your leader, I had to do that. I knew there's danger to it, but I had to do it. I stood out front. I led. Nobody that's a leader would not do what I did. And I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. Let's take it to the streets and see what students have to say about COVID-19 and the vice presidential debate. I personally don't think he's doing a super good job. I've noticed a lot of other countries are sort of been precautionary for a few months. And as a result, they've been able to sort of already go back to normalcy. And I wish we would do something like that and that people would just pay more attention to protection. So, you know what, uh, you know, I think he could have definitely had a better response. I don't think a lot of people would argue with that. Um, I think maybe he does get more criticism than he might deserve, but again, uh, I think he could have handled it better. So I'm almost, I'm almost uh, not indifferent, you know, but I don't feel like he handled the worst I've ever seen. I don't feel like he's handled it the best, you know. I think he's that, I mean, if I had to choose, I guess I'd maybe say a little bit on the poor end of the spectrum. I'm Jordan Nicole with Listen Up. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. All right, good morning, KU. I'm Blake Sevenberg, and here today, and I'm here with Hope. Hope, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm currently a sophomore. I'm in secondary education for history and government, and I was getting ready to study and then go to my class in West Coast. And then I decided to bother her, and today we're going to be asking her questions that don't necessarily have answers. The first question for you, Hope, is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, I think yes. I've debated this a lot with my friends and roommates because I think there's the categories of food, like sandwiches, which is food within two pieces of bread. And then you have pop tarts or ravioli, which is all in case. And then you'd also have like calzones in there. And then soup, which is anything in a bowl without any bread around it. So like you can include salad or chili or anything. Um, I think the categories can be whatever you want, as big or small. But I like to give hot dogs and sandwiches because it's a little more fun that way. Okay, so you talked about soups. It's cereal soup. I would say cereal is a soup because it's just a cold soup. And if you can't cook cold soup, there's a lot of restaurants that I've actually ordered. So it, I'd include it. Fair enough. All right. One more question for you. Do fish get thirsty? That one's pretty tricky. Um, I'd have to say no. I think that you drink water all day long, swimming in a lake or an ocean or whatever they're in. Um, they could need to but I'm not a bio major, so, you know, you can, you can tell me anything and I think I'd believe you. Interesting. Um, that's all I have for you today. We're going to go to a commercial break, and thank you, Hope, for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, I always just clap and sorry. This is where everyone's talking amongst themselves. Do you know how to do it? Do you know how to do it? Are we supposed to smile? We start. Somebody over here already started. Can we talk about how the piccolo part is the most complicated one? It is. <laughs> if you listen, you're doing it when the band's not playing. You have to tell me when it starts. I still don't know. Here we go.
happen now? No pumps. Nailed it. I practiced this morning. Tomorrow is just two people. It has a right and a wrong way of doing it. No. No. Wrong. I like my way better. I don't know how One, to do two, the three, end. Four. It's just, I don't sorry. know the head. <laughs> it's hard by yourself. Welcome back. I'm Kennedy Kavinsky. And I'm Soleil. This is your Thursday Good Morning News update. The City of Lawrence received over $1 million from the CARES Act funding, which is intended to build campuses for homeless communities in the area, as well as installing sanitation stations downtown. An additional $3.4 million was also provided for the economic recovery of local businesses. The KU Graduate Teaching Assistant Coalition gears up yet again for another round of negotiations over their contracts with the university. Coalition members advocate for adequate pay and treatment of GTAs, which has been continuously debated for the past 30 years. In light of President Trump's recent coronavirus diagnosis, the Commission on Presidential Debates has announced the next debate, which is scheduled on October 15th, to be held virtually. President Trump has since stated a virtual debate would be a waste of time and he will not attend. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, who was involved in the death of George Floyd late May, has been released from police custody after posting a $1 million bond. Chauvin continues to face three separate charges of second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and manslaughter. Well, the football team lost again, 47-7 to Oklahoma State, but KU Athletics took the opportunity to honor two of the greatest players in Jayhawk history. Two larger-than-life bronze statues will now welcome visitors to the Anderson Family Football Complex next to Memorial Stadium. The statues honor Lawrence native John Heddle and Gail Sayers, who just passed away a little over a week ago. Heddle played offense and defense at KU from 1957 to 1961, then went to play quarterback in the NFL for 16 years and threw more than 33,000 yards and 240 touchdowns. Sayers starred in KU from 1962 to 1964. The Football, the NFL Pro Hall of Famer in the first year of eligibility despite playing only seven years because of injuries. And we have to pass on some sad news as former cross country and track and field athlete Ben Brownlee died this week while hiking in the Colorado mountains. Brownlee was an experienced hiker but was alone in the San Juan mountains before reported missing. Coaches and former teammates shared their thoughts and prayers on Twitter. Brownlee competed from KU from 2012 to 2016, and he was just 26 years old.